93 shillings of 45 cents. That's not a pretty picture. Um, no, not at all. Actually, it hit a high of 93.50, um, which, I mean, I, I guess that's what brought the governor out. And um, he's actually said that um, he's, they are going to, they're going to adjust the, um, the, the bank's foreign exchange exposure in accordance to their core capital downwards. Currently, mm -hmm. it's about 20%, but um, they'll adjust this downwards. Um, I think it's pretty scary. All, people are talking of 95 now. Yeah. So, um, and looking at the forward rate, um, if you look at forward rate, six right. months is at about 102. So, I mean, what, what do you think is impacting? I mean, for the longest time, obviously, it's been a heavy dollar demand because of the inflation situation, because of fuel and food importers, but also this dollar downgrade. Were you expecting to have such a dramatic impact on the shilling? Um, Actually, okay, I, I think it, it, the, what happened with the downgrade, I think it had more of a, a bigger impact on our boss because uh, what happened now is, I mean, looking at the exchange, it's lost. It's been actually being supported by foreign, uh, foreign investors over the last, I'd say, two, three months. They've actually all fled. Today they did, I mean, the market, they did about 29% of the market. Most of the orders have been put on hold. Um, away, I mean, most of them have taken a wait and see. Um, stance. So I think it really affected the equity market more than it affected the shilling because what we saw with the shilling is, has actually been happening. I mean, with the, with the, uh, the central bank coming in and um, injecting liquidity every, I mean, about two or three times a week. Um, it was bound to happen. It's been weakening since ac actually for the last, um, I mean, since the last week, it's been weakening consistently. Mm. So I think I would blame it more on other factors apart from um, the downgrade of um, American debt. Okay, we also know, I mean, everything about monetary policy and um, what's happened by way of changing the interbank rate or overnight rate, a um, little bit more monetary tightening. What's expected of the CBK in a situation like this? Um, basically, what everyone expects is um, tightening, and uh, that's what we actually expected during the last uh, MPC meeting, um, although the CBR was held constant. But you have to understand where the central bank was coming from. They also don't want to... Um, um, the lending rates to shoot up because that's definitely what would have happened if had, um, the CBR had risen. So I think they're between a rock and a hard place. They're trying, basically, what they, they still want to maintain economic growth. Mm -hmm. And so they basically still want to maintain low interest rates. They don't want um, lend, lending rates rising. But at the same time, they also have to um, rein in inflation. And this basically means tightening liquidity in the market. All right. Meanwhile, the CBK has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Bank of Mauritius. What's that all about? I mean, to what extent do, are we going to see Kenyan banks setting up business offshore? Um, it's, I mean, of course, we'll see. I mean, uh, look at uh, INM Bank, they're all, all they're already there. Look at DTB, they're also looking at other regional markets, apart from the traditional um, East African community. So um, we should expect um, a lot of banks looking that way. And also what's happening locally is the margins have really shrunk. And um, there's, especially for the big banks, there's actually no more sp uh, space for growth locally. So they're looking towards other regional markets. So yes, we should ex it's actually quite a positive step and we should expect a lot more to see a lot more local banks looking that way. I mean, talking about those margins shrinking, they seem to be doing so a lot more for the smaller banks as opposed to some of the blue chips that we often speak about. Why this discrepancy? Why are the smaller banks really suffering? Uh, they're facing a liquidity crunch, battling to raise money on the interbank markets. They're battling to attract customers for more deposits. What's the situation there and what explains those differentials? Um, basically, I think times are pretty hard for the smaller banks. You know, the bigger banks, um, first and foremost, the most obvious reason, they have economies of scale. And also, they're able to invest in, um, um, high, I mean, in technology, cut their costs down, look at KCB, look at Barclays. Um, most, of the new, most of the big banks have all installed new systems. Um, this has drastically cut down their costs. The smaller banks don't have the facility. Also, as you said, um, there's a problem with liquidity. Um, with most of the bigger banks holding most of the liquidity, the smaller banks, the, the, the cost of funds for smaller banks is a lot higher than you'll find for bigger banks. And also the market is shrinking. Mm. I mean, um, with the inflationary pressures on uh, the common uh, man every day, we don't expect um, a, that much of growth in deposits. So what there is to the, the deposits that are there are all going to the bigger banks that have a bigger network, uh, such as equity, KCB.
All right, let's talk about the gainers on today's market. Uh, Carbacid, Kenya Re, the Standard Group, all gaining somewhere in the region of about 2 to 3% on their share price. You said that obviously volumes are lower, foreigners staying back. So what accounts for this trade? Um, basically, I mean, look, um, there are a lot of also local investors who are seeing bargains these prices. Um, I wouldn't say they really drive the market, but um, you'll see... Um, some investors coming in. I mean, and all the foreign investors were not all out. There was about, uh, I mean, they did about 29% of market share today, but although mostly they were looking at Safaricom and uh, Equity Bank. So, um, of course, you'll see a few gainers, a few, a few trade. Um, what, what the main part you should look at, apart from the gain in price, is the quantities traded. Because mm. um, if you look at the, those, the, um, the share prices that actually gained, you'll find that the quantities were very were minimal. Mm. So someone basically traded a bit high, so it drives the, the, the price up. Okay, and finally, comparisons between the equity market and the fixed income market. We do know today about 1.8 billion shillings was transacted on the fixed income side. Investors have been struggling, you know. Do they look for bargains in equities? Do they try to put their money in government securities? Because either way, they're between a rock and a hard place. Um, I think what we're seeing with actually a lot of investors, they would rather put their money in the short end of the yield curve because we've seen quite a lot of activity um, in bonds ranging from tenors of two years and below. Um, although we do have um, the 364 DT bill this week, actually the auction uh, closes tomorrow. We expect this to come in at levels of between 11.50 to 12%. Mm. So um, we'll see a lot of money coming into, into, the, into the short end, cause as, as we've been seeing actually. Although CBK has actually been managing the 91 day rate it's a, it's been rising but um only marginally by about an average of five basis points per auction which is very small compared to the rise we saw about uh, three months ago but um i think the short end has um, a lot of bargains if you're going to get a one-year paper at 12 percent that's a buy for anyone 